Today, I'm going to show you the best way to lose belly fat. Now, I haven't done a video on belly fat in a while. I've done a lot of them, and I will put some links down below if you haven't seen them. But I wanted to touch on some new information and give you a, a deeper understanding of what's going on because anytime you try to solve a problem and it doesn't solve, realize that you may be solving the wrong problem. And this is very evident in the area of weight loss since it has like a 98% failure rate when attempting to lose weight. Now you can try counting your calories and lowering your calories or exercising more and seeing how that works for you, but there's a much better approach. And I am going to be including exercise in this video as well, because it is important. It's not the most significant thing, but it is important. I'm going to show you about five different exercises that are really helpful, but in the big scheme of things, you're really only looking at about 15% of your results will come from exercise. When I go to the gym and I watch people week after week, trying to exercise their belly fat off and you just, you don't see any change. And there's a reason for that to understand that reason. I'm going to do a little tiny deep dive into both metformin, which is a medication they use for diabetes and tell you why it also works for weight loss. Now I'm not recommending it, but it's important to understand why it works. Okay. And I will cover that in a second. And then also the other procedure called gastric bypass, which also helps you lose weight, but not from the reason you might think, not from just reducing calories. It works for another reason. So understanding both of these things in relationship to weight loss, um, it will validate um, what I've been saying for a very long time. Now, most people know this, but if you have belly fat, what's going on is you have liver fat and you're getting this spill off of this fat from your liver into the abdominal cavity. Okay. So if you look down and you can't seem to see your shoes, uh, we know you have a fatty liver. So it's very important to target the real problem a fatty liver, as well as what causes a fatty liver. And most people would agree that that would be too much insulin. Okay. So it's the excess amount of insulin. If you have too much insulin, the body stores fat in the liver, and then it spills off into the abdominal area. That's called visceral fat. And if you reduce your insulin, which is the fat storing hormone, that is the mechanism that helps you, uh, tap into fat and burn fat, especially in your midsection, as well as in your liver. So the real problem is not just that you are overweight, it's that you have too much insulin. And yes, you need to lower your carbs, but there's some other things you need to understand as well. Now let's first talk about metformin. It's a medication that is used in diabetes, but in other conditions as well. Like we use it in PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, because it helps women with that condition. So really what it's doing, it's lowering insulin. So really why they use it in PCOS is that um, the high levels of androgens, which is causing the hair loss, the facial hair, the deeper voice is coming from an increase of insulin. And so metformin lowers insulin. Also metformin is very effective for weight loss. Why? Because it helps you lower insulin. Now I'm definitely not recommending metformin. And I'm also going to say, if you are on metformin, I'm not telling you to come off metformin too, but I just want to help you understand why it works. So metformin uh, was originally derived from an herb called goat's rue, and they found certain properties that helped increase insulin sensitivity. So metformin helps you to get rid of insulin resistance. So insulin resistance occurs because there's too much insulin, right? So metformin works uh, to overcome that, and it just makes your cells um, more receptive to insulin, and so your body can produce less. But the thing is, and this is might be new information for you, metformin stops this production of glucose being made from your liver. When you have insulin resistance, as in a pre-diabetic or a diabetic, or even neither of those, you just have insulin resistance, which the majority of the population has, your liver is making too much glucose. And that's called gluconeogenesis. Neo, which means new, genesis means the creation of, and then gluco, glucose. So just making too much sugar. And as a side note, when some people start the ketogenic diet and they start waking up in the morning and having this thing called the dawn phenomena where they have high blood glucose, that is because of the liver making too much glucose out of fat, out of protein, out of ketones. So anytime your body has insulin resistance, it's going to be making more glucose in the liver. And I mean, think about this. Here you are, um, you cut down your carbs, but you still can't lose weight. Why? Because your body is making glucose. It's not even coming from your diet. Your body is making it from fat. A lot of people don't know that. So metformin helps that condition. It stops the liver from making glucose. But the problem with metformin, it has side effects. It even comes with a black box warning 
called lactic acidosis because that could actually kill you. And it depletes your B1 and your B12. What you might not realize is there's other herbs like berberine, for example, that can create effects almost identical to metformin. So why would you want to take metformin when there's a natural alternative? So the way metformin works is it reduces the production of glucose in your liver. Okay. So that's, it's going to help you lose weight right there because glucose turns into fat through the help of insulin, but metformin also reduces fat in your liver. Okay. So anything that reduces insulin and gets rid of fat off the liver is going to help you get rid of your belly. So it does both of those actions. So the fact that metformin works for weight loss and belly fat and even diabetes validates uh, what I've been saying forever. You must focus on the reduction of insulin if you want to be successful with your belly fat. Now let's shift gears to gastric bypass. You might initially think that if you reduce the size of your stomach and uh, bypass some of your small intestine, that you're going to eat less and then lose weight because of the lower amount of calories. But in reality, there's something else going on. There's a certain hormone, okay, um, which I'll just tell you it's GIP that increases insulin in the small intestine. And when you do a gastric bypass, you pretty much destroy that hormone. So it's no longer going to be active anymore. So when you get gastric bypass, what's happening is you're dramatically dropping insulin. This is why it does work for diabetes type two. This is why people do lose weight, but at the expense of this surgical procedure, which I'm not recommending because honestly, I don't think you need to go that far. You just have to understand that there's a hormone in your small intestine called GIP that increases insulin every time you eat. Okay. It doesn't matter what you eat. So if you eat a meal, it's going to increase insulin. So the two things that will increase insulin is both carbohydrates or glucose or sugar and frequent eating. Okay. So this also validates the whole concept of intermittent fasting. You want to eat less. It's not about the reduction of calories. It's about eating less frequently. So intermittent fasting, essential, powerful, and lowering insulin, getting to the core of why you have belly fat, as well as getting rid of uh, fat in your liver. So I hope that gives you some understanding of why it's so important to focus on the real problem, insulin, to help you extract fat off the liver, as well as eventually have a flat stomach. So here's what you need to do. Number one, go on a low carb diet. Um, number two, do intermittent fasting. Both of those actions are the most powerful things. And within 14 days, you can reduce up to 50% of your fat off your liver, which is going to usually show up in your midsection as well. Number three, there's some really important core exercises that I'm going to get to at the end of this. I'm going to walk you through them and that's going to help as well. So why does core exercises help you lose weight? Um, not to melt off fat off your belly, but just to strengthen the muscles as well as it helps lower insulin. Okay. So it helps get rid of insulin resistance. That's why you see the results. It's not about just using up the calories. Like most people think. All right. Number four, fiber as in consuming enough greens, um, helps you in different ways. Uh, number one, the magnesium and the potassium both help with insulin resistance. It makes insulin more sensitive. Plus the fiber that is consumed by your microbes turns into something called small chain fatty acids. Um, one being butyrate, which then makes insulin more sensitive. So it helps get rid of insulin resistance indirectly. And so those little microbes that you have help you lose weight. All right. Number five, you want uh, something that can mimic uh, metformin like berberine. Great, great, powerful herb that does a lot, but one thing it can do, it can help make insulin more sensitive. Next one is apple cider vinegar. You take a tablespoon in your water and you do like two or three of these um, drinks a day. You can put lemon as well. That will help. But apple cider vinegar makes insulin more sensitive, thereby reducing the amount of insulin. All right. Number seven, you must lower your stress level. Stress activates cortisol. Cortisol makes you live on sugar that increases insulin. So stress is very similar to eating candy as far as what it does to glucose and insulin. I have a ton of videos on this, but you really need to go through life with a very relaxed uh, state of mind, a relaxed attitude. You don't want to be so serious. And there's just a ton of information that I've shared uh, on that topic. All right. Number eight, your sleep. Um, you're not going to be able to lose your belly if you cannot sleep and you need a high quality sleep, at least seven, maybe eight hours. And if you have trouble with that, uh, put some links down below. Now we're going to go right into these exercises. All right. In this first exercise, uh, which is really good for beginners, you're going to be doing toe touches, but not standing. You're going to be sitting down with your feet going up 
and you're going to touch your toes. So this is what you do. Line your back with your feet raised up and your legs about 90 degrees. Okay. Now this might not necessarily be for beginners, um, but for most people, um, it should be doable. So in this exercise, you're going to engage your lower abdominals as you lift your upper body off the mat, reach your hands toward your toes, pausing for one to two seconds at the top, then slowly lower back down. I would recommend doing one to three sets of about 12 to 18 repetitions every other day. This is a great exercise for your core. All right, the next exercise is called bicycle crunches. Now for this exercise, make sure you rotate your core to avoid pulling your hips or straining your neck. Then you're gonna stabilize your lower back to the floor and then draw your shoulders away from your ears. So this is how to do it. Just land your back with your knees and your heels flat on the floor. Interlace your fingers at the base of your skull then you're going to come into a starting position by engaging your core, lifting your upper body from the floor and raising your knees so they're directly above your hips. Now on the exhale, twist your torso as you bring your right elbow and your left knee towards each other. At the same time, straighten and extend your right leg. Hold this position for a one to two count before inhaling to the starting position. Then do the opposite side. This is one repetition. So you're going to do two to three sets of eight to 18 repetitions depending on where your fitness level is. All right, number three, burpees. These are, these are pretty tough. Now these burpees are a very explosive exercise that will really activate uh, your abdominal muscles. So the first thing is to stand uh, with your feet, uh, shoulder width apart. Squat down and place your palms in front of you on the floor, directly under your shoulders. Now jump your legs back to come into a push-up position. Do one push-up and then jump your feet back to the starting position. Raise your arms overhead, as you explosively jump. Upon landing, lower back down to the squat position. You wanna do between six to 10 sets of 12 to 25 repetitions. Now, realize you gotta work up to this because um, it's gonna take some time to get used to this exercise. It's pretty intense. All right, number four, the boat pose. This exercise will really build your abs and spinal muscles. All right, this is how you're gonna do it. From a seated position, lean back on your buttocks and tailbone. Raise your legs into the air and form a V shape. Extend your arms in front so they're parallel to the floor. Now you're gonna hold that position for about one minute and repeat this two to three times. Number five, the forward plank. Holding a plank position takes a lot of strength and endurance and it's gonna hit your abs, your back, and your core. The plank is one of the best exercises for core conditioning, but it can also work your glutes and hamstrings and really help your posture and your balance. So the first thing you're gonna do is rest your forearms on the floor with your elbows directly underneath your shoulders and your hands facing forward so that your arms are parallel. Extend your legs out beneath you and rest your toes on the floor. Your body should form one straight line from your shoulders to your heels. Squeeze your entire core, glutes, quads, and tuck your butt under a little to keep your lower back straight. Now make sure you do not drop your hips or raise your butt upwards towards the ceiling. Keep things very, very level. And you wanna make sure that your head is positioned so your neck is in a neutral position and your focus is on your arms. Now you're gonna hold this position for about 40 seconds. Now at first, maybe you can get to 20 seconds, but you wanna work up to 40 seconds. And you might wanna do this like two or maybe three times every other day. All right, so now that you have a more comprehensive um, plan for getting rid of that belly fat, you might wanna check out this tutorial on how to do keto and intermittent fasting correctly.